What's up everybody, it's Matt from Spark Lighting. I'm here to show you all kinds of tips and tricks for the Mosaic or Pharos lighting controller. Um, quick note on Mosaic and Pharos, you guys probably know this, but outside of the States, there's a product um, that we love made by Pharos Architectural Lighting Controls. It's the Pharos series of controller. Um, inside the States, it's available through ETC's product channel. It's called Mosaic. So they're kind of interchangeable. We'll use the two terms interchangeably. Um, the software we're working in today is the Mosaic or ETC's version, but it is effectively the same thing. So let's dive in. One of the things we really like to do on our projects here in the project tab on the left, uh, first tab over, there's a notes section. We really like to use the notes field uh, under the project tab to comment on the latest updates to the file. It's really helpful when there are multiple programmers that are sharing a file or if we are working with one of our properties, uh, they've got a file open, we're trading the file back and forth. Even small things like updating a patch or changing a trigger number, commenting that can be really helpful, keeps everybody up to speed um, with the same show file. So that's one of the disciplines we've um, decided to go after uh, in our show files. So I have open the triggers tab and you can see on the left, uh, maybe because I'm a lighting designer, I like to organize things by color, uh, but the numerical values are also organized. We try to be consistent uh, when we're creating a project file to use uh, consistent trigger numbers or trigger categories. That helps again, keep everybody on the same page. So soft triggers are always uh, starting at one for us in single digits. Soft triggers are great to have. Remember that if a client doesn't have a user interface, if we're using uh, the Pharos and the Mosaic controller mainly to do time of day or astronomical events, which is pretty typical for our projects, um, the only way that that client has to access a particular test pattern or to run a show manually is gonna be through the web interface. So soft buttons, you really can't have enough of them. So every timeline that we have in a file, we like to have a soft button that associates with that. Um, and my favorite, I always like to have a release all soft button. It's kind of a holdover from the old days of programming on a hog, if any of you guys remember that, where you just kind of mash the clear button until the lighting rig wills into your submission. Uh, same idea here, you can smash the release all button, hit it as many times as you want until all the lights clear and go away. Um, second category we have here, starting in the 30s, we have a series of real-time or astronomical clocks. That for most of our projects is how we trigger um, timelines or different actions. Most of our projects are outdoor, so we tend to um, activate lights based on uh, their relationship to sunset or sunrise. Um, so the astronomical triggers are really helpful to us real-time as well. You can see here in this file, we've got a, an all-off cue that happens every day uh, at 1 a.m. So for this particular property, they may run a variety of different timelines during the day, but at the end of their operation at 1 a.m., everything clears out regardless of which timeline was playing. Um, we've got a series of digital inputs in this file too. That also is fairly typical for us. Um, nothing beats a contact closure for a handover from a ride controller or a PLC controller. Um, we tend to use these to uh, activate different lighting conditions or an emergency stop is a pretty typical uh, request from our clients. So when their ride controller, uh, when an e-stop is activated, uh, the whole ride goes into a, sa a safety condition for an evac. Um, same thing for us, we can take all the lights, um, we can eliminate any activity or chase pattern and just use those lights as another uh, emergency lighting source to help guests evacuate a ride. Startup triggers are something we like to use on every project. They don't fit in every circumstance, but a lot of times if you think about a, a power outage and a controller reboots, we can make some assumptions about a default state that that controller needs to return to. Startup triggers are a really great way to do that. It helps ensure that, especially if the project isn't monitored or if there isn't a lot of competency on site to maintain the equipment, uh, guarantee that if something goes down, you're gonna come up and eh, nine times out of 10, you'll be in the right timeline. Simulate, something that not a lot of people are talking about, but I think is a game changer. So when I'm programming offsite, I will open up the simulate tab as a separate window and I'll put my timeline tab on another monitor and uh, you can actually visualize or previs your entire lighting rig uh, before you go onto the project site. So this is like the guys get to do on touring shows with Grand Demet. Hey, we can do that in architectural lighting too. 
Uh, so I'm gonna hit play and I'm actually running a timeline. I'm running a lighting sequence uh, that was built in the timeline window and then here is represented uh, on the screen. It's another reason the layout tab uh, or the layout function can be a little uh, mystifying because you can create multiple layouts. Um, one of the things I find really helpful, particularly for programming offsite, is to take all the lighting fixtures and to roughly lay them out in their geometric relationship to each other. Um, you can see here it's, it's pretty uh, representative. It's not particularly accurate, but I know from knowing the property that these lights are in the correct order and their orientation to each other to the extent that it matters is, is kind of located on the paper. What that lets me do is I can pre-visualize or I can see my lighting programming before I go on site. Uh, for our team, this probably saves 60 or 70% of the hours we have to spend on a site. We're able to uh, do that work more cost-effectively offsite and we take up less space, which it's always a crunch at the end of a project, so we don't have to be in everybody's way. So I'm running a timeline in Simulate. This is one of the timelines that I've built um, inside the Mosaic Designer software. And it's a great way to see your project before you go on site. So we'll assume you've watched one of our videos about patching fixtures inside of Mosaic or Pharos Designer. So a little more about some tips and tricks that we use when we're patching to try to keep everything organized. So I've got a fixture pulled up. One of the things that we like to do uh, is to use the name field to help sort data. So the first designation here, big par, that refers to the type of fixture we're using. That might be a Chevet FC160. In this case, it's an S4 big par. We use a, a vertical line to delineate the next set of data. And then lift till number two, that's the location of the fixture. So as I go through and click on some of the different fixtures here in this layout, you can see that each one um, has both a name. So you can, at a glance, know what type of fixture you're working with and know what um, area or zone that fixture is assigned to you. Where that comes in handy is when we swap over here to the patch tab, we start patching fixtures. Um, we're able to see, again, at a glance in the patch window, I know it's a big par fixture. I know it's associated with the load station. Over here, it's another big par fixture and it's associated with lift hill number two. So we found that having using the name field to contain that information um, becomes really helpful in patching and really helpful in programming as well. Remember that in Mosaic, you can have uh, lighting fixtures that belong to more than one group. Same way, uh, a same kind of idea as groups on a moving light console. So for this reason, it's a really effective tool to break down a large number of fixtures into small manageable bite-sized pieces. That way I really avoid um, what otherwise would be the daunting task of scrolling through the endless vertical list of all these lighting fixtures. Now, thankfully, because I used our trick about naming conventions, I know what the light fixture is and I have a general idea where that light fixture is located. However, um, to try to program this way would be a massive time suck. 